why don't we talk about hand cannons, historically one of the best weapon types in PvP. Week after week, you can open up Destiny Trials Report to reveal that yet again hand cannons are crushing the primary game out there in PvP. However, we kind of have a lot to choose from. Today I wanted to look at three particular legendary hand cannons which are all strong contenders IMO for the title of best legendary kinetic hand cannon in D2. Ostringer, Ias Luna, and the Time Lost Fatebringer. I'm going to go through what each of these bad boys brings to the table, what might be the best hand cannon for you and why, and finally, which one I most prefer for PvP. But real quick, gotta give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Manscaped. Fellas, if you're not up to date on the latest on men's grooming, then you're not really doing yourself any favors. Fortunately for you jabronis, Manscaped offers everything you need for head-to-toe grooming as part of their Performance Package Bundle. The Lawnmower 4.0 Waterproof Body Hair Trimmer is their best yet. Helps you trim the hedges, especially in those hard-to-reach places, with no trouble at all. And by by the way, what are you wrapping up your boys in these days? Some ratty old thing you've been carrying around longer than your deep-seated emotional baggage? Time to trade up, boys, because Manscaped has released a new collection of anti-chafing, high-performance boxer briefs, and they are comfy AF. Same ones I showed you on Twitter. They've got a patented jewel pouch design, a dedicated space that cradles your boys but with perforated performance fabric for extra breathability. There's never been a better time to level up your hygiene game. What are you waiting for? Go to manscaped.com slash falloutplays right now and get 20% off and free international shipping. Your balls will thank you. All right, back to the content. Let's start off with Time Lost Fatebringer, which right out the gate has one noticeable advantage over both the Luna and the Ostringer. It's free. Fadebringer is acquired in the Vault of Glass raid, which is currently a free-to-play raid within D2. As mentioned, we'll be looking at the Time Lost version, which is clearly the better version overall, as it has better stats and the ability to take on adept weapon mods, something that both Ias Luna and Ostringer cannot do. Taking a quick look under the hood, Fadebringer has a lot of great things going for it. In Column 3, turns out that the perks I like the most for Fadebringer in PvP are actually not available at all on either Ias Luna or Ostringer. Those perks being Killing Wind, Tunnel Vision, Thresh, and Explosive Payload. Killing Wind, I think, gets overlooked by a lot of people, but getting range, mobility, and handling is pretty great. Because Luna and Stringer can't get Killing Wind, Fatebringer is the only one of the three capable of rolling Killing Wind Kill Clip, a combo that I really like. Tunnel Vision also pairs really well with Kill Clip, and it's another unique role that both Luna and Stringer can't get. According to D2 Gunsmith, not only do you get that beefed up target acquisition, but also a tighter accuracy accuracy cone, which you definitely want. Most people though, myself included, prefer Explosive Payload on the Fatebringer. If you're a new player, Explosive Payload breaks up the damage into two numbers, the bullet impact damage and the explosion damage. With both numbers added up together, you're still doing the same amount of damage as a regular shot. However, unlike regular bullet damage, no matter how far away you move from your target, the explosion damage number will never go down, making Payload a slightly better way to fight against the effects of damage drop off. On top of that, Explosive Payload gives extra visual flinch to the person being shot and is extremely annoying to deal with. More things unique to the Fatebringer. It can roll a widely loved PvP perk, Eye of the Storm, in Column 4, which could be good or bad. The downside is that you'd have to give up other picks like Kill Clip, Opening Shot, or Adrenaline Junkie, but it does mean that you can do fun-as-hell neutral game combos like Explosive Payload and Eye of the Storm, an overall great role for 1v1-ing people. Quick reminder, Reminder that with Kill Clip, you can achieve 62 damage on a body shot and 93 damage on a headshot, leading to a very easy two body, one headshot kill in PvP. Double reminder that with Kill Clip and Radiant together, that will give you the ability to two tap any non buffed enemy in PvP. Opening shot is incredibly consistent but not unique to the Fatebringer. Ostringer can roll that perk in column four. Something that is unique to Fatebringer though, Adrenaline Junkie. I would probably rather roll Kill Clip, TBH, but the option is there if you want to pop on something like young Ahamkara and do your best true Vanguard impression. Whiskey and Dadbot not included. Remember that at one grenade kill, Junkie will hit 33% extra damage, aka the exact same number as Kill Clip. While Fatebringer is one of the only guns in the game capable of rolling Firefly, IMO, that's way more of a PvE perk. I'm not going to rock that in PvP. 
key, but the option is there. All right, with that in mind, you should consider maining or grinding out a god roll Fatebringer if you like guns with a very vertical recoil direction, 98 overall, you're a free to play D2 player, you want to take advantage of explosive payload and PVP, you really enjoy the flexibility of using adept weapon mods, or you just like the idea of mixing and matching any of the following perk combos, killing wind, tunnel vision, thresh, or explosive payload in column three, paired with eye of the storm, kill clip, opening shot, or junkie in column four. Overall on Fatebringer, it's a strong PVP hand cannon that brings a lot to the table. Gun to my head, I mostly enjoy it for the troll factor of explosive payload, but then again, I'm considering farming for a new one because while my current one is good, it's not a perfect five out of five roll. Potential downside of the Fatebringer is that while you can farm one, it can be kind of grindy. Gotta get a whole buttload of spoils, which is kind of annoying, and then bang out a master Vog. And then even with dumping all of your spoils into the end chest, not a guarantee of a god roll. Final thoughts on all three hand cannons weighed against each other at the end of the video, but for right now, why don't we move on to the Awestringer, the newest of the three, kinda. While Fatebringer is free for any player to earn, Awestringer is not. But that may be one of the only downsides, because while grinding out deep sight opulent weapons is a huge pain in the gooch, once you've unlocked five, you're in the promised land forever, as Awestringer is currently the only craftable hand cannon in the game. After you've unlocked the blueprint, minimal grinding, and no RNG-related pain. Plan your god roll on paper, get the materials crafted done. Massive advantage and one of my favorite things about the Awestringer. Outside of that though, plenty of other good things about Awestringer. While the enhanced weapon perks aren't widely on a whole other level as regular perks, every little bit of extra juice can help you in PvP. Unlike Fatebringer, Awestringer has access to ricochet rounds in column two, which is really fun to spec into when you remember that stability is now directly tied to unflinching in game. You never want your range on a hand cannon to suffer too badly, but if you in theory wanted to go max out unflinching on your Austringer hand cannon, you could literally get a roll with over 90 stability. I got two right now, each with 91, and I'll tell you, solid as a rock when I get shot, boy. But let's talk about what unique things Austringer can bring to the party. One thing I want to get out of the way right now is Air Assault. This perk is one potential bungee buff away from being actually viable, but for right now, probably ignore. As mentioned in my other video on the topic, check that out if you haven't seen it yet. Primary weapons only need 60 AE in order to achieve ground level accuracy while in the air. Air Assaults does potentially grant you up to 60 AE, which is great, but the perk will only give you the full amount mount if you're incredibly low on health, which at that point you'd probably become a sitting duck and it wouldn't be worth it. So not quite good yet, mostly a meme and we are moving on. Snapshot ain't unique, but always worth a mention in PVP. Same thing for Outlaw. One thing unique to Ostringer out of the big three though, is that Ostringer is capable of running the fantastic Eye of the Storm in column three, whereas on Fatebringer, it was in column four. That does give you the ability to run what I think are two of the strongest combos available on the gun for PVP, Eye of the Storm Rangefinder or Eye of the Storm opening shot. There's kind of a weird debate going on between a lot of PvP people I know regarding Rangefinder versus opening shot on the Awestringer. Really, it's all gonna boil down to how each of them feels to you, but they're both killer options that you can't go wrong with either way. Awestringer's got demo if you're looking for some kind of hand cannon to beef up any type of I like to abuse grenades build you might be tinkering with. Friendly reminder to new people that Zen Moment doesn't really work as advertised. It doesn't increase stability through damage. It removes reticle bounce and weapon shake as confirmed by Bungie on a podcast that I host. Could help you out a little bit if you play on controller, but I would probably recommend avoiding it overall. Rampage is available on Awestringer and not on the Luna or the Fatebringer. And while it does bring a little extra versatility, it's nowhere near as potent as Kill Clip. Number wise, Rampage times one, which is what you're going to be getting most frequently, will give you the ability to kill a guardian with two to the head and one to the body instead of just three to the head. If you're looking for a little extra safety cushion with your three tapping, it's always an option. My thoughts on Ostringer can almost be completely boiled down to one word, craftable. Because farming is such a big and regular part of D2, being able to full on craft a hand cannon is next level beneficial. All the grinding is done up front, and when you're finished, you can tinker and make whatever role you want to play around with. In that regard alone, Ostringer to me, almost wins flat out. Even with the big downsides, including lack of certain perks that I really dig, like moving target or kill clip, 
lack of ability to equip adept weapon mods. All of that is pretty much made up for in spades by being able to craft one. In short, I would recommend you maining Ostringer if you hate grinding, if you want to try out very specific weapon rolls to see how they feel, and if you like hand cannons that do really well in the neutral game. All right, again, before we compare all three, why don't we move on to hand cannon number three, Ias Luna. An OG fan favorite from D1, Luna goes pretty hard in PvP with a variety of great rolls. Actually, if you quickly gander at both column three and column four, it's very difficult to get what some might consider a bad roll. More on that in a minute. Stat-wise, the Luna is damned impressive with more default range, default stability, and default aim assist than both Ostringer and Fatebringer. And before any of you type, um, actually, you might notice it has 80 aim assist by default on D2 Gunsmith, but remember that any scope that you put on the Luna gives it an extra five, pushing it just above Fatebringer in the aim assist department. Like Ostringer, Luna has both high cal or ricochet in column two, meaning you could attempt to deal more flinch if you wanted to, but like most people right now, I'm leaning hard into ricochet for extra unflinching. The perks in column three and column four are shockingly good. Every one of them has the potential to benefit you in the neutral game in PvP. There's a few I want to call attention to though, and the first three all fall into the same category. Perks that were indirectly buffed greatly by the recent changes to how unflinching works. Rapid hit, heating up, and perpetual motion. Rapid hit gives more stability and reload the more headshots you get. Heating up gives a better accuracy cone, stability, and recoil direction immediately after a kill. And perpetual motion gives stability handling and reload for just being in motion for a few seconds. All three of those perks have the potential to improve your stability. And now that more stability equals better unflinching in a gunfight, they're better than they already were. My personal preference is probably on perpetual motion, but any would be great. And worth noting, none of those three perks can drop on Fatebringer or Ostringer. Luna can also roll Rangefinder in column three, kind of an interesting alternative to Ostringer where it can roll in column four. Makes me feel that if you're really down with Rangefinder hand cannons, Ostringer might be your go-to so that your Rangefinder pick doesn't clash with the other great options Luna has in column three. For column four, Luna has two extra damage dealing options, Kill Clip and Harmony. Kill Clip would probably be the more straightforward extra damage play and Harmony the slightly more complex. Not that I want to encourage people to run this weapon because I f hate it, truth be told. But if you're a filthy mongrel that uses things like Lord of Wolves or maybe something more respectable like duality, could be a really easy way for you to proc Harmony on your Luna. Also, worth remembering that Harmony is essentially double the duration of Kill Clip, which is extra fresh. I'm kind of shocked that Luna is the only hand cannon out of the three on the table today capable of rolling moving target. However, as much as I love moving target, I almost don't need it with the Luna because the Icarus Grip mod only gives 15 airborne effectiveness, which doesn't really get me anywhere close to the threshold of 60, I'm probably not going to use it unless I'm rocking a jumpy airborne build that I can spec into. I might just go with a targeting adjuster mod for an extra plus five, and between that and a helmet mod, that should get you to 100 aim assist on your Luna. However, hand cannon targeting mods on your helmet are pricey at five, so I guess you could potentially rock a moving target Luna and free up the mod space on your helm. Final big perk I want to mention on the Luna is headstone. It's really easy to get caught up in all the fun of a new 3.0 subclass. When Void 3.0 came out, I had fun tinkering with my Child of the Old God build, and now I'm back to floofing around with Icarus Dash and healing grenades. However, it's worth noting that stasis builds are still ridiculously strong in PvP. With that in mind, if you're still rocking an Icy Boy build, headstone is a damn good pick. Get a headshot kill and bam, crystal right there. You can then get extra beefy DR by being near the crystal with Whisper of chains, or you could break it to get more grenade energy back, it'll very likely mesh with whatever build you're rocking very well. Again, Fatebringer and Luna are not capable of running Headstone, a lot of unique things on the Luna. You should think about maining Luna if you want to go hard into unflinching, you play stasis in PvP, and maybe the most important factor, you have a god roll already, or you're very patient. 100% the worst part about Luna is that unlike Fatebringer or Ostringer, you have to farm for one. Sure. 
Ostringer and Fatebringer require their own unique degree of farming. However, Ostringer will eventually let you craft your perfect god roll, and you can directly buy Fatebringers at the end of Vogue. Luna, although it has a direct repeatable farm, it's probably going to be the hardest method of getting a god roll. Hard as in RNG is literally your only saving grace, but as long as you're a patient person and have free time, you can plant down and grind really hard with a group of people. But it's really tempting to not do that when the appeal of a perfectly craftable Ostringer sits not too far away. And that kind of ties into my own rankings on each weapon. Important to remind y'all that there will be no universally accepted rating here. My rating might be different from yours. For example, if you main a stasis build in PvP, it would be really likely that you're going to rank Is Luna above the other two. You know the deal. But I did promise I would give my own rankings, and here they are. While I do enjoy Fatebringer, it's personally going to be rated third for me. I will use it in PvP if I'm in the mood to light people up with explosive payload. If you're a fan of that perk, there's no question that you're going to love Fatebringer. I think the 98 recoil direction might be a tad too vertical for me, but again, personal preferences, the weapon is great overall. Here's how I'm going to put things between Ostringer and Luna. I think, again, just for me, Luna has the higher ceiling potential. I love all the perks, and with the newly buffed stability, getting Ubermax anti-flinch via something like Perpetual Motion is untouchably awesome. With that in mind, though, I'm giving the number one rank to Ostringer, and I'll admit it's solely 100% due to the fact that Ostringer is craftable and Luna is not. If you were blessed with godly RNG and were sitting on literally the perfect Luna in your vault, hell to the yeah and GG to you. I got a few great ones just shy of perfect, and I gotta be honest, the idea of going back to the dungeon farm for hours hoping for a 5 out of 5 roll sucks the life right out of me. Ostringer is by no means worse than Luna. I just happen to prefer Luna's perks a tad more. But yeah, the custom factor, it weighs way too hard for me. In my opinion, if Fatebringer has a unique role that you like, use it. If you're hella patient, farm a 5-5 Luna. And if you want the best hand cannon for the least amount of headache, Ostringer will be more than good enough. Tell me down in the comments section what your favorite of the three is and why. Bonus points from me if you share an overall loadout with your best hand cannon roll. Share today's video with a new player if you know any, and hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Great way to support the channel for free. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.